We are live. Congratulations. We finally made it. <laughs> this is Dan, and I'm here with my beautiful co-host, uh, co Nicole, my awesome daughter. And it's so great to be with all of you today. And for those of you who haven't done so yet, I would appreciate it if you would take a minute to click on that, that uh, StreamYard button down below there so that it enables you to make comments and ask questions. And that would help us out an awful lot on this end. So we'll get started today. And I see that Melly's there. How about that? Yay, Melinda. Hi, Melinda. <laughs> it's great to see you here. <laughs> and I wanted to tonight to um, be a little selfish and talk about why you should listen to what I have to say about mind whispering and what it and how it might help you. All right. So I'm going to give, take the time to give you a little history of who I am and what got me to this point. All right. So in my 20s, I was a man with just a ton of energy and I couldn't relax to save my soul. And so I used all of the things that we use to try to relax, like food and drugs and alcohol and sex. And I abused every single one of them, right? Yeah, that's true. And none of them gave me anything more than just a moment's relaxation. And then almost immediately the mind would kick back in again and drive me crazy. And I knew my problem was my mind, but I didn't know how to fix it. So I, you know, like I said, I went to workshops, I read books, I did all the things that I'm sure all of you have tried to do, and nothing helped, except for maybe a moment. Then I was invited to um, invite, I was asked to invite a man over to our hypnosis group that I belonged to at that time to speak about the thing that he had. And I was invited by a, a, a girlfriend of mine at the time was really into crystals. And she thought that's what this guy was involved in. And so I gave him a call and asked him and told him that a friend of mine had mentioned him and would, that he'd be a great speaker for our group and would he come speak to our group. And the first thing he asked me was, how much money do you pay? And I went, well, you know, it's a nonprofit group and they really don't have much, much of a budget. So uh, he says, well, you know, nobody should work for free. I said, well, if, you know, being a smart ass, I said, well, if you don't want to do it, it's all right, but it's an opportunity for you to maybe sell something that you've got. So it's up to you. He said, well, okay, I'll do it this time. So uh, we had a meeting. It was every Thursday night or Friday night. I don't remember now. Um, uh, once a month. And he was going to be our keynote speaker. And the meeting had started and and he hadn't shown up yet. But suddenly this, this uh, Chinese gentleman walks in and we knew that he must be the speaker because we didn't know him. <laughs> and so <laughs> when it was time to bring the speaker up, I introduced, you know, Dr. George Yao and to the audience. And he started talking about how everything is energy and that he was a scientist in the space industry and had worked on the first heat shields that were made on craft. And the reason they decided to make a heat shield was in the very beginning of the space program, they could shoot rockets up in the air but the metal would start to disintegrate upon reentry. And they figured, you know, that's not going to be a good way of putting human beings up in space. So we got to figure out a way of solving that problem. And so what they, what they found out was they could layer the outside area where the heat comes in called the heat shield. They could layer it with a series of crit with a layer of crystals. And to a scientist, a crystal is a microgranule. It's not necessarily a quartz crystal like what you or I would think of as crystals. And so what they did was they layered this stuff with this crystal material, and it acted like a loudspeaker. It would absorb the energy it was entering into and beam it back out, creating a force field around itself so it could reenter the atmosphere with that extreme heat and not burn up. So that's what his job was in the early days of the space industry. And he also became interested in, in, in spirituality and attended many, many workshops they used to have here in Murrieta at a place called the Live Polarity Therapy. It was a, it was a former um, hot springs spa. And he came in and he would go to all the different classes they had. And one of the classes he went to was one about chakra healing. And so he would 
they would teach you to just focus on somebody's center, like especially if you know, like if a woman was having a hard time, focus on her heart center and send positive energy her way, right? And and you could actually feel the difference in the woman. It would actually help her. But what he also noticed was that there was a transference of energy that would hit him back. And because he was so sensitive, it would throw him out of balance. And he said, well, that's not good. And at that same time, he had become involved in a spirit of regions that we don't know about in our world that we live in. So he built a soundproof attic where it was there was absolutely no sound and, and he would have he had air piped up in there, spent a fortune getting this room set up for himself. And he would go up in there at night and meditate all night long. Right. And. So he would come down from meditating and he'd go turn the TV on and he found that the energy from the TV would make him nauseous. He'd be, he was hypersensitive after that long of meditation, right? So he said, well, gee, if all of these energies are affecting us and I know that we can use crystals to create um, force fields around this, what if I made a, a small little filter that you could wear that would beam out of uh, energy of 50 feet from you so that the energy of the environment, the energy of people wouldn't affect you so much, right? And so he did that. He, he started him out with a little, I should have brought one for today, a little pill box. And he filled it with this particular kinds of crystals and, and materials. And he would activate him in a special way. And, and he would just hand them out to people in his, in his church and, and just have them wear them and see what they noticed, right? And as the whole thing progressed, he created balancings that you would do with these and people would come to his restaurant. He had a vegetarian restaurant called open called Sesame in uh, Newport Beach. And people would come and he'd put them in the back room and he'd put these things on them. And an hour later, they'd be like, oh, my God, I can't believe it. Right. So that was the history of how all this started for me. This was like 40 years ago. Right. And we knew at the time that we were really ahead of our time as far as the technology and the work would go, right? George was a was a, a physicist, and I'm just old Dan, right? High school graduate. I didn't know anything. And I I I uh, listened to what he had to say during that workshop where he would talk about how putting like a pack of cigarettes on your solar plexus and checking with dowsing rods, you would see how the energy would get depleted from the toxin that's inside tobacco, right? And, and then he would have you think positive, loving feelings and see the difference in how your, your energy field would expand, right? And how we go through those expansions and contractions all the time based on the people we're around, the events that we're involved in, the energy that we're in. And you've all had those times where you've been around somebody really negative and how it just kind of sucks the life right out of you, right? And then you've been around somebody that's really up and positive and how great that makes you feel. So, so you can understand how that works, right? So life is kind of like a roller coaster. There's goods and bads all the time, right? The key is for us to keep our own balance and stay in that positive state, knowing that nothing good lasts forever and nothing bad does either, right? And when you can get to that point, then you're in a center. And that's in, that's living in the moment and in the moments where the magic happens. I know I've talked about this before, but you can never be reminded too often, right? So as he's explaining about all this energy stuff and how these filters protect you from those those things. I was thinking about how my dad had a welder in his backyard and he'd go use that welder and I could feel the energy pouring off of that thing. Right. And I'm thinking that's got to affect you in some way or another. Right. Would drive over high under high tension wires and just notice how much effect that had on it. Now, coincidentally, just before this all happened, actually it was after, after, Trying to remember. No, I think it was before. I was having a problem with keeping my energy balanced. I would have what's called manic episodes because my energy would just be so high that it kicks you into a consciousness that you're not even aware of. It exists, right? And magical things happen during a manic episode. If any of you have ever had one, I'd love to see a comment on the comment board. But um, interestingly, I had a psychiatrist that I had to visit at one point to, to get a driver's license back because I had had seizures and 
and um, other health issues. And so the DMV wanted to make sure I was cleared by a doctor and a psychiatrist. And I went to a psychiatrist uh, in Murrieta who told me he could never release me to get a driver's license if I wasn't taking medications. And I told him, no, I don't take those. I don't believe in it, right? And he said, well, that's then I can't sign you off. And I said, okay, well, and here's your money and goodbye, thanks. And I saw a magazine article from a doctor in Newport Beach. It was a metaphysical magazine. And I found from a psychiatrist. And I figured, well, if he would advertise in a metaphysical magazine, he's probably somebody that would be open to what I've done to change my life and, and might, might work with me. So I gave him a call and he answered the phone, which I thought was kind of weird, right? Usually they've got a receptionist. <clears throat> and I said, you know, before we get started, doctor, I have a question for you. Do you believe that medications are the only way to um, overcome manic episodes? He said, no, there's a lot of ways. I said, okay, then I'll come down and make an appointment with you if that's okay. He goes, yeah, that's fine. So I drove down there and before we even started our session, he says, look, before we get started, I just want to tell you that I want to, I will be more than happy to sign your release form because in all of my years of practice, you're the first patient I've ever had who interviewed me to see if I was the right doctor for you or not. Now, if that doesn't explain mental health, I don't know what does. I went, wow, this is pretty cool, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we go into the office then, and he's got a whiteboard uh, in, in front of me. And it's got a picture of a dove on it. Did I, I Have I told this story before, Nick? I don't think so. Okay, good. So he's got a dove. On, he's got a bird, you know, that looks like a dove uh, up on the whiteboard with an arrow pointing down. And I'm looking at that and looking at it. And he says, no, nah, don't get ahead of me. I know you're already thinking about what this all means, but let me explain it to you. He said, a manic episode is simply your energies reaching a level of consciousness that's much higher than anything you've ever experienced before. So it's kind of like a bird when he's first learning how to fly, getting up in altitudes that he doesn't, he doesn't understand, doesn't have the strength for. And what's the natural thing he's going to do? He's going to crash and burn, right? And he says, and that's what happens to people with manic episodes. But the problem is manic episodes, the crash is devastating. And when I had my first manic episode, they suggested I join a manic depressive group. I would encourage you not to do that if you're manic because depressives hate manics. <laughs> oh, goodness. So I would walk in the room and I'm all happy and sunshine, right? And these guys are all depressed and wanting to kill themselves. And <laughs> not a good too thing. Bright, too bright. <laughs> yeah, too bright. Right. <laughs> so <laughs> but going to that group, I would explain to them about what this doctor said. And of course, the depressives just don't want to hear it, right? And, but for, for manics, the depressive end of a manic episode is devastating because you you have all this guilt and shame and blame that you really don't need to have. It's like normal human beings don't need to have them either, right? But with the manic, with the depressive side of a manic episode, it's crushing because you've got all this guilt and shame and blame. All of your family have all this guilt and shame and blame, and all your friends are all con so concerned about you that. Anytime you laugh a little too loud or, or you, you seem a little up, they're, they're concerned, right? And so you're living your life in a fishbowl. And I know if any of you have ever had this, you know exactly what I'm talking about, right? So that's what I went through. But the, thanks to this psychiatrist, and I really, I've been trying to find him for years and I haven't been successful yet. I hope that if anybody knows who I'm talking about, they'll connect me with him because I would just love to thank him. He changed my entire life. What's his name? Let's try it. If I knew his name, I, I'd be that oh. much better, right? I don't even no. remember his name, but he was in Newport Beach in Fashion Island. So if anybody knows who I'm talking about, please connect us. I would love to thank him. Anyway, he's talking about how 
you know, the whole idea is learning to fly. He said, so rather than wrapping yourself all up in all the guilt and shame and blame, what I want to encourage you to do is think about the magical events that happen because in a manic episode, there's some really magical things that go on. You get to really understand about what the mind is capable of and, and, and instead of all the negative stuff that the mind can do, right? So I did that. I, I, I decided that I didn't want to live in that guilt and shame and blame. It wasn't going to help me and it wasn't going to help anybody else, right? I realized I needed to move away from my family because it was just too hard to try to grow in an environment where they're watching your every move and your every word, right? So I had to get away. I had to become independent. I had to heal because during one of my major manic episodes, in fact, the major manic episode, I got cut up by a guy with a razor blade. And I had over 40 major lacerations on my face and arms. Major was anything over six inches. We didn't count the smaller ones because there were too many, right? So I, I did that. I, I, I used the whispers, which we're talking about today. Nick's got one on. I've got mine here. Yay. Because that scientist we were talking about that talked about how energy affects and how these filters can help do that. When I got out of the hospital from being all cut up, I used the what we called a different product name at the time. It was a different product. But we used the same energy product type and a, a tester that we could use on the scars to remove the energy in the scars. And I did that every day, you know, day and night I would do that. And in the beginning, when I first got cut up, the doctors made me night appointments to see them because I was scaring people in the waiting room. So they wanted to see me at night where there weren't so many people. I was told by my lawyers I'd probably never be able to date again. They doubt that I'd ever be able to work again because I was so hideous looking, right? I was scaring people in the waiting room. So... That's why I know the power of what this product whispers are all about and what they can do. And that's why I recommend them so highly to every human being, because it's the fastest way to bring your mind back to its normal, natural frequencies. We all have frequency ranges in our body, in our emotions, and in our mind. And when we are in what's called the Schumann resonance within our body, emotions, and mind, we're in the present. We're at peace. But the mind races out all the time, right? It's like, oh, there's a shiny object. Let me go check that one, right? It's like a dog running after, after a shiny object. Girl. Or a cat, a catnip, right? Our mind is the same way. You can be sitting there thinking nothing, and all of a sudden, you're thinking about something that happened 10 years ago, and then two seconds later, you're thinking about six months from now, right? And the mind's racing all the time. And our environment is more polluted with, with electromagnetic fields and, and electricity and people that were saturated in this energy all the time now. So trying to stay balanced is really difficult, right? When I was doing some research for my marketing work, I went on YouTube and just put in negative mind chatter in the search bar, right? And this young lady has a, has a video about how to stop mind chatter. I said, oh, this will be interesting. I'll see what she has to say. And I'm sure she, she means well, and perhaps there are people that are far more gifted at it than I am. But her suggestion was all you need to do is meditate for five minutes a day. Your mind chatter will go away. Really? Yes. Not this brain. <laughs> Not this brain. Not this brain either, right? <laughs> Nor any of your minds, I'm sure. <laughs> so, you know, when you think about it, all the webinars, all the seminars, all the lectures, all the books you read, all the poems you read, all the advice that you get, all the drugs, all the medication, all the food, all the sex, none of that stuff is going to calm a mind that's active 24 hours a day. Because even when you're sleeping, your mind's going crazy, right? You get weird dreams and all that kind of stuff, right? So how in the world do we think we're going to succeed in our lives with a mind that's constantly telling us we're losers? 
that we're imposters. Imposters. What do I? Why do I think I have a right to have success with you know when there's all these famous people that are doing so great? Well, you're just as capable as anybody else. You have life experiences that may help somebody in a desperate situation. You don't know, right? I don't know who's going to be watching this video today or tomorrow or next month that might go, oh, my God, this was exactly what I was looking for, right? And that's what happened to me. So to, to go back to, to Dr. Yao, the inventor of the product that I'm talking about, at the end of the seminar, I was jazzed because I've been looking for a solution on how to quiet my mind forever, right? And nothing was working. And I was desperate. I was, I'd really reached, you know, like a level of God, desperation. And I walked up to him to say hi to him because we hadn't met personally, right? We had just talked on the phone. And he handed me one of his devices to say, here, I'm supposed to give this to you. And he had a puzzled look on his face, kind of like this, right? And I said, really? Give it to me? He goes, yeah, I'm supposed to give it to you. I said, okay, what do I do with it? He said, put it in your pocket, see what happens. I said, really? He goes, yeah. I said, what else? He said, well, you can put it under your pillow and it'll change your dreams. I said, okay. So now remember, I'm a guy that's hyper, hyper active, right? I just have so much energy. I just can't, can't slow it down, right? My body feel like, felt like piano wire inside. I don't know if any of you have ever had that feeling. But it's just so tight inside that, you know, I was, I had, I was so, I had so lack of confidence that I couldn't even sit next to a pretty girl without feeling that my mere presence would offend her. That's how bad my self-esteem was, right? God knows I love women, right, Nick? <laughs> <laughs> women uh, love you. Yeah, women love me. I'm very blessed, yes. So I walked up to introduce myself. He handed me one of these things, told me to wear it, see what I noticed. Now, in that, at that point, I'm driving an old beat-up Yugo. If, if you don't know what it is, look it up on Facebook. There's maybe a picture of it or on YouTube. Maybe you'll see it. Uh, it's an old, small European car. And it had, had front-end damage. So every time I go to shift the car, the front end would jack up, right? <laughs> Just a real, real beater. And I'm driving home and everything felt so fluid and so smooth and easy. And there was no noise outside. Everything was just so peaceful. And I was like, holy cow, this is amazing. And I'm feeling the energy pour off, off of me, right? I just feel myself relaxing. And I'm like, wow, that's really something. So I put it under my pillow that night. Don't remember having dreams, but, but I did wake up feeling really refreshed, right? Now, through all of the things that I had been through, all the workshops and all the self-help books and all the things that I had done through all of those, you know, that decade, the 20s, the year 20s, not the decade 20s. <laughs> Your grandkids would differ. They yeah, would differ with we'll you. get that story in a little bit, too. <laughs> um I had heard the saying that if you want something, hang around somebody that's got it and they'll help you get it. Because that's what truly successful people do. People that just want to get rich, they'll try to ignore you. But people that understand that you have to give back will, more than, will be absolutely uh, uh, willing and, and, and excited to help you get what you want, right? So I, hearing that in my head, I called Dr. Yao the next day and I said, hey, can I come over and visit you? I, I had an amazing evening. And I'd love to talk to you about it. He said, sure, come on over. So I got over to his place and he had dinner ready. And he put dinner on the table and he had chopsticks out. Now, he didn't know I knew how to use chopsticks or not, but that he was Chinese. And by God, you use chopsticks, right? So we had dinner together and we talked a little bit about, you know, what I experienced and what the work was about and the spiritual side of it all. And, and um, he said, okay, come in the living room with me. I said, all right. So I get in the living room. He says, okay, lay on the floor. And then, you know, I'd only met the man for what, 10 minutes, right? And he's having me lay on the floor. Okay. So I laid on the floor. He, he handed me two of his products and he had, him, had me put one on each hand you know, over, cross over in the, in the, over the shoulders. And then he put one between my knees and had me curl up in the fetal position. And he says, okay, I'll be back later. And that was it. 
And I look outside and he's washing down his pool deck, right? I'm thinking, well, this is strange. And it was daylight, right? He's washing down his pool deck. And the next thing I know, I wake up. I don't know how long I was laying there. I don't know where he is. It's dark inside. I can barely see in the room. And I'm thinking, what the heck am I, what the heck's going on? I get up off the floor and there was absolutely no tension anywhere in my body, in my mind, in my emotions. I don't think I've ever felt that relaxed in my entire life, right? So I get up and I'm going, holy cow. And I look around the house. I don't see him. I, I go outside and he's washing his Corvette in the driveway. Right? <laughs> and I'm thinking, you know, that was amazing. So I walk up to him. I said, George, I, I think I've found the work I want to do the rest of my life. This is just amazing. And I can't imagine a human being not wanting to have this kind of experience, right? And he said, well, that's nice. I'm glad. And, and we talked about a few more things. And he said, okay, time for you to go home. I said, all right. And, and I'm driving home. And again, I'm just, I'm just like, holy cow, I can't believe how, how amazing this is, right? And, so from, and I knew on my way home that this is what I was going to do the rest of my life. And it's what I've done the rest of my life. Now, have there been ups and downs? Absolutely. Part of the problem was I suck as a marketer, and I, I think I talked about that in one of my other, other posts. But in the early days with the other product, we didn't know how to explain what this work was all about, right? And I would go to networking events and things, and I would say, um, people would say, well, what is it you do? And I'd go, um, well, um, um, well, it's... Uh, well, it, uh, well it, it, it really helps lower your stress level, right? And so that lack of confidence and that lack of clarity in the message made it really difficult. And yet I built a business that was international in basis. I had customers all over the world, right? And then Dr. Yao passed away. And his daughter took over the business. She's a wonderful lady. I think nothing but positive, loving thoughts her way. She's a great lady. But I could see that it was even more difficult for her to understand how to market this product than it was for us. And I decided that I needed, you know, that if this work was going to continue, I needed to strike out on my own. So that's what I did. I created my own product line based on the same technology. Dr. Yao and I had worked side by side from, from really that day, that night until his passing, right? So I got to know everything about the product. I got to understand all of the, all of how it works and why. And I wanted a product that was more comfortable for people to wear, that looked nicer for people to wear so that they weren't, you know, like women would typically wear the product in their bra because that was a handy pocket, right? And men, men would wear them in their pockets and they don't care, you know, whatever, right? But so we made a product, the, the Whisper, which we've shown you here, and Nick's got one there, um, that is much more comfortable to wear. It's a little more subtle than the previous product because Dr. Yao had been concerned about making them too strong. You know, us Americans, if, it, if a little's good, a lot's better, right? But he was always concerned that maybe they were getting too strong. So we made the Whispers to be very gentle for people because after all, What's that saying about God's whisper is earth's thunder, right? Part of the reason why we call them whispers. So I started, I, I started uh, getting the products made. It was a very exciting time. And then 2008 hit and the recession, you know, what was, to me, it was a depression. The old saying that it is a recession is when it's happening to other people. A depression is when it's happening to you. <laughs> And 2008 really wiped us out. It really did. And so I had to go get a job, which, you know, job is just over broke. And that's kind of where they keep you. And uh, so we just kept working on this as we could, you know, a little bit here, a little bit there. Still didn't really have the marketing thing worked out. Although right around 2008, I started using the idea of mind whispering, 
because, you know, the horse whisperer and the dog whisperer and all that. And I said, yeah, I could be the money. And Kate, Kate, my wife, elbowed me one day while we were watching the dog whisperer and said, yeah, you could be the mind whisperer, right? So that's why we decided to call the products whispers. That's why we went with the idea of mind whispering. And the magical thing was that when I started going to workshops and uh, what's the word I'm using? Uh, uh, you know, where you get together for groups and cha exchange um, referrals. I don't remember the name of it at the moment. But anyway, I'd go to these lunch events and breakfast events, and I could immediately, you know, people say, what do you do? I said, I help people quiet their mind. Oh, my God, what have you got, right? It's like, and, and that's when I realized we really did have the right message, right? So, you know, fast forward to today, I got to meet a gentleman that does amazing work helping people. His name is Joey Ragona. If you have the desire to start your own business, I would encourage you to take a look at his site. There it is right there. It's the Heart Centered Marketing Club. Let him know that I sent you. And if you decide to move forward with you, um, just let him know that I sent you. All right. I've been very happy to have him be a part of to be a part of his network because he talks about heart-centered marketing, right? And this work is really all about helping you disconnect from your head, get into your heart where you really want to live, right? So up there you see facebook.com groups mind whispering. That's our Facebook group. I have to apologize that I haven't really given as much attention to that as I intend to. This is a one man show so far, folks. Having my daughter help on this end has been very helpful. Even though I've done all the talking so far, we'll change that in a minute, right? But uh, join the Mind Whispering Club. If you have questions about, you know, what I would love to hear from you, what kind of things you notice that drive you nuts with your mind? What's the constant beating that you get? What's the message that you get that you wish you could just change easy, right? And we've got tips for that as well. In fact, if you... Um, if you go to my website, I don't have it listed here. It's just whisper.net. Um, you'll see that there are con you can connect to our mind whispering tips and our newsletters and all of those things are on the build. So please be patient with me. I I'm working on it. I'm getting there. All right. And but I just wanted you to know why I do this work, what it means to me, but more importantly, I do it because of what it means for you. All right. If you've struggled, if, you, if you're not where you want to be in your life, first of all, understand that God has you exactly where you're supposed to be, right? Everything works the way he wants it to work, not the way we want it to work. If, if this had worked the way I wanted it to work, I'd be filthy rich by now and, and been retired 100 years ago, right? But this was, this was the time because now we have things like Zoom and StreamYard and and webinars and all of those things we didn't have access to even 10 years ago, right? So I can reach a thousand people in a day where it used to be I'd have to travel all over the country to, to, to get to 500, right? So big changes. So this is the perfect time. People are more stressed out than ever, not less stressed, right? And all the drugs and all the food and all the all the uh, sex and all the, you know, all the things that you can do to try to solve the mind issue only help a little bit. So if you live close to the Menifee, California area, and you haven't experienced an energy balancing, DM me on Facebook. I'll make an appointment for you so you can experience it firsthand. All right. And if you're too far away, sign up on the Facebook on the um, uh, Mind Whispering website, and we'll get you some information on how you can experience this for yourself, all right? I always say experience the miracle of a whisper because that's really what happened to me. It was a miracle, and it continues to be a miracle. All right, so that's all about me. Nick, what's happening in your world? Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it was nice to hear about George and, uh, you know, how it all, uh, how it all started and, you know, what, what experience you had with it, you know, yeah. um, 
I met George early on in my life as well, you know, and such a kind man, you know, just yeah. never a harsh feeling or word or unless it was like correcting. We <laughs> right? have time for you, trust me. <laughs> yeah, he was a corrector. What a good teacher. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Mentor, yeah. And um you know, I, I experienced most of that, what my father talked about today with him. So, you know, um, it's been a, a, an interesting journey, right? <laughs> right. Um, but in my world, pretty quiet, you know, been working and, and doing the deal, you know. Um, Enjoying your new <laughs> grandchild? Oh, my gosh, she's so beautiful. Oh, yeah. Both my grandkids are just amazing, you know, yep. um, and my kids. <laughs> but the grandkids are something special, you know. <laughs> Isn't it so bizarre that you have children that are younger than your grandchildren? Well, yeah. <laughs> that well, I have every day. I have one child that's younger than my grandchild. That's right. Yeah, one's older, right? Yeah. 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 Yeah, a bizarre experience. What a new way of life, you know. I have my second marriage, and you know, they all get along great. We all get along great, and yeah. you know, just got to grow up and mature. And both of us, you know, my husband now and and myself. <laughs> it's a branding thing, isn't it? You know. Yeah, it happens, you know, and we get to restart and and you know re-experience and and create a new you know um different a different experience you know yes absolutely different so, times in my life yes you were mentioning the grandkids and their and their um view on things might be different right and, and i think you were referring to that story with jose right I'm referring to the grandkids thinking you are so dang old. <laughs> oh, right. yeah. One day, Jose, her, her son, came to me and says, Grandpa, you're really old, aren't you? And I said, oh, yeah, I'm so old. I used to babysit Jesus. He said, well, what was I like? I said, oh, it was awful. He thought he was God. <laughs> <laughs> and ever since, you know, Papa's just really dang old. <laughs> yeah. mm. And they have fun with it. <laughs> yeah. Now they're great kids. I love them all so much. They're absolutely awesome. Well, Melinda's saying she hasn't experienced the balancing yet, so we got to get her on the table. Yep. So we'll make that happen. Is, is that in the comments? Yes. Uh, what was it? Was was it lemon pasta? What's that about? That George made. Oh no no no! That's that was <laughs> mine. Now he made Chinese food. <laughs> Probably tofu. <laughs> oh yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, yes, was... yeah, you have to get in touch with me and come over here. You all have to come to my house and get a balancing. Okay, maybe I can arrange to where your mom comes over at the same time and we get you, get you all over on the table. All right. I'll be holding the baby. There you go. So you got a babysitter <laughs> already. And we'll do lemon pasta too. We'll make Ooh. it a whole day. How's that sound? That's his fave. That's yeah. his uh trade or signature. There we go. That and Alfredo, right? Yes, yes. So <laughs> to to kind of go along with where we've been going so far, I just want to remind each and every one of you that God made you perfect just the way you are. All right. The imperfection is you thinking you're imper imperfect. If God wanted you to be a different way, you'd be a different way. Yes. So acceptance is the answer to all our problems today. There's a there's a group that talks about that a lot, right? You might know. That I don't way. know. Okay, but uh, <laughs> but it's so true. It's you know you are perfect the way you are, and. The, and I doubt that anybody that might watch this video would be the kind of person that doesn't care about other people. Pretty sure right. you all, we all do, right? And yeah. being of service to others is really the secret to life, right? Life isn't about what you get from it. It's about what you give to it. So, you know, quit being afraid. There's nothing to be afraid of. We're all going to die. We all know that. Things are going to happen. That's called life, right? But it's how you respond to all of those things that make the world a difference. So 
I want to encourage each of you to practice being more positive minded. When your mind's giving you that garbage that it will tend to do because you haven't trained it yet, just tell it, thank you for sharing, but I, this is the way I want you to think. I want you to think about the positive because you can take any experience and find a positive in it, right? I remember when the World Trade Center crashed, right? I had a friend named Ira and Ira and I got mm -hmm. together one day and I said, gosh, what an amazing experience with the plane crash, right? Yeah, I said, but you know, there's a lot of positive that comes out of that. He goes, oh, damn, you and your positivity. What in the world could be positive about, about the disaster that happened there? I said, well, people start to recognize that life is short and that they need to hug their children more, right? Be a little kinder to each other. People in New York were even being nice to each other. <laughs> yeah. Which the I mean, community what, came together as a whole and yeah. really worked together. Yeah. So, you know, there's always a positive. Sometimes you have to work a little harder to find it, right? It's like when a loved one dies, it's always such a, a sad time. But really, it's a, it's a good time because they graduate, right? The reason we're sad is we're still here. <laughs> we still have to deal with all this stuff, right? And we miss so, them. Yeah. Yeah, of course we're going to miss them, right? Yeah. I still all the time. You know, as you get older, you find that you think more about all the people that have gone ahead of you, right? And it's like, holy cow, it's amazing, right? Yeah. So I don't know how much longer God wants me on this plane, but what I am sure of is that I want him to use me up as much as he can possibly use me up till there isn't anything left. And then take me home. That's my wish, right? In the meantime, I want to help as many of you as I possibly can get to experience how nice it is to have a mind that's your best friend instead of your worst enemy. All right? Yes. Any closing thoughts, Nick? We're, we're a little early, but not bad. 45 minutes for an hour. That's the psychiatrist time, right? Yeah. Yeah, there you go. So we just did counseling. <laughs> no, I, I really enjoyed hearing your your progression through um, through the process of, of where you are today. It, that was really interesting to hear all the you know the details of how it came to be. So yeah, I didn't know if you ever knew all of that, but I thought this I'm is something. Sure I have, I'm nice. sure I have heard that story for you yeah. know in bits and pieces, probably. But right. um, it was nice to hear it all the way through. Thank you. I enjoyed sharing it. And, uh, you know, part of the selfish reasons for doing this, number one, is that I get to tell my story, which to me is an important story, especially for those of you that wonder how in the world can a little plastic thing change the way I live, right? But it does. And I guarantee it does. For those of you wondering, you got, you got a 90-day guarantee that if you don't like it for any reason, return it. That's all. No big deal. But I know you won't. In 40 years, I've had less than 10 returns. That's not a bad average, right? And five of them cried as they were giving them back because their husband insisted that they return, return them because they couldn't understand it. Oh, well. So I oh love this video. Oh, you're so sweet. Oh, <laughs> job, guys. I'm so, so glad you joined in. Yes, it was great to have somebody actually on the call, right? Very so, much so. Uh, one of the other things I want to mention is that there's a guy named Jeff Walker who does a program called TL, TLC. Anyway, he does a training program and he does videos too. And on one video, he talked about that the most important thing for success is not talent. It's consistency. So, and that he had a woman that was in his group that did a Facebook live event every week for months with only her and her mother attending. But she kept on doing it. And now she's a millionaire. Nice, right? So I am going to keep on doing this. And, I, and I'm so happy that uh, the Hi, Nicole Cheryl. Hi, Luke. Hi, Richard. Yes. Hi, family. And hi, Aurora. I just want to tell you all how how much it means to me that you all support me like this. I think it's just amazing. And I, and I thank you from the bottom of my heart. So we will do this every week and uh, the numbers will grow. I have no doubt about it. 
And again, yeah, so I won't to talk to you all week so we can catch up on this hour. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, she says how nice. <laughs> that's right. Uh, well, we're not gonna stop because, because there's just no reason to stop, right? That's right. They all say hi. Oh, they're uh, you know, yes. my granddaughter Melinda married into just an amazing family. She yes. really did. The, uh, I have met, God, generations of that family of family events. And they're all just so kind and loving and peaceful and, and sharing and caring and no judgment at all. I, I just, I'm just so honored to be a part of that family. And um, uh, see, I'm a blessed man, right? <laughs> As are all of you. Don't forget, if you think you're not a good person, come talk to me. You can DM me. You can call me. My, my phone number is on the website. I've mean, I got nothing to hide, but I'm here for you. All right. I want to see you live the kind of life you want to live. So does God. You know, I do a, I do a little exercise. I, I shared it, I think, in my first video that lasted a total of six minutes, right? Because <laughs> you <laughs> didn't have time to fill up time. <laughs> That's right. That's exactly right. But I, I talked about how I lost it. I totally lost it. Huh. Sorry. Oh, well. Happens. That's what happens when you get old, Pop. What? <laughs> I'm just kidding. You heard, you heard that saying that the first two things that go, one's the memory, and I forget what the other one is? Yeah. <laughs> 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 well, so, I've anyway, God completely enjoyed you being with you. Uh, I've completely enjoyed being with you well, in this I hour. Well, I all together because we do well, well together all the time, right? Yeah. For those of you that haven't heard the story, I'll share it again, that my daughter was born on my birthday. Yes. One of the greatest gifts my ex-wife gave me. And um, she was a beautiful lady. And uh, thank God Nicole has her beauty and not my features, right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right, folks. Have an awesome week. We will see you next Monday at 6 o'clock. Me there. Bye, Monday night.